the month of January started with a new strike character, Kid Vegeta. But like I said previously, strike characters were pretty much outdated by that time. But this guy was actually not bad because he shared 4 links with the other strike Vegeta. So if you're a new player or facing a strength type enemy, this was actually a pretty decent rotation. They were pretty much the exact same character just with one different link and different leader skills. The next day they released another filler banner, this time featuring all of the realm of gods characters. So text person Blue Goku. Physical person Blue Vegeta, Agel person God Goku, Agel person Blue Goku, Strength person Blue Vegeta, Agel person Blue Vegeta, Strength Beerus, Tech and Intuis. So not a bad banner at all. The God Gokus and Vegetas were still pretty decent characters, and the banner also had a one discounted multi with increased SSR rates. Well, the rates were actually increased last year for all banners, but I forgot to mention that. <laughs> a week later, they released another Vegito, and this guy was actually not bad. His leader skill was okay. He had a supreme damage multiplier while also raising the attack of all allies by 20% and a new kin passive giving 10% attack per key sphere obtained. This guy was pretty much just an offensive version of tech Vegito. So if you wanted more damage and less support you would just go for this guy. His banner was also not bad I guess. It featured tech Vegito, Agel Gotenks, Strengths for Oob, Int Android 13 and Int Perfect Cell. In Vegito also came with another world tournament, the 7th world tournament. And you would think that the 7th world tournament would bring something new to the table since you know the number seven is kind of a big deal in japan and well no nothing changed <laughs> same rewards same 80 wins for an ssr ticket same everything the only difference was the reward card this new agl beers had an interest in meter skill recovering 500 hp per same type orb obtained this could have been a very good leader skill coupled with like some hp on a new boo unit but alone and on a beers this was pretty much useless he did have a 70% attack on super though so this guy was actually a more consistent and reliable version of strength beers and probably the best beers overall at the time obviously strength beers at his peak was better but his peak was only available 30% of the time so you're honestly just better off running this guy four days later they released the hero version of the extermination plan event this event came with a new formable whis and new dokkan awakening medals for some of the og ssrs hl whis was actually pretty good he had a decent leader skill for fish play unit and a 25% chance to sun on super attack and a free senzu when you drop below 30% hp that senzu alone made this guy insanely valuable he was a must on pretty much every single fish play team at the time as a matter of fact when i started playing this game back in 2018 this game was still a must run on most fish play teams Agel's percent goku on the other hand was not as great like he was good but for a tur he was quite disappointing he only gained an additional 30% defense to his leader skill an additional 20% chance to stun on super while keeping an extreme damage multiplier and an additional 2k went below 50% hp so 7k overall went below 50% hp which was obviously very good but the thing is when you're below 50% hp it's pretty much kill or get killed and this guy's damage was just not that great because of his extreme damage multiplier you honestly were probably better off running the strengths percent goku from the one piece crossover campaign text percent vegeta was not any better he got the same leader skill buff as goku but no changes to his super attack effect like bro he kept an extreme damage multiplier with nothing new like what were they thinking i guess his passive got quite a big upgrade he went from 2k and 2000 attack when below 30 percent hp to 3k and 2500 attack when below 80 percent hp which like i said is quite a big jump but his old passive was just so bad that even without upgrade his new passive was still not that great piccolo on the other hand got quite a huge buff like his leader skill and super attack still sucked but he now gave 70 percent defense to all allies unconditionally this was insane at the time like crazy beyond belief <laughs> like a super type buff that high was something never seen before at the time like if his link set wasn't that bad like if this guy was a sane character he would have easily been one of the most valuable unit in the game and a must run in pretty much every team he was on oh and uh super vegeta was also now farmable from that same event so a good thing i guess if you still haven't sa level the age of super vegeta which you probably didn't since guys were extremely rare at the time <laughs> like you pretty much had to be a well to have some they were only obtainable from the world tournament as a ranking reward fast forward to the end of the month the countdown celebration for the first year anniversary started every player was rewarded with 30 stones and new super saiyan goku and various rewards including a new support item gulls panties which was a gp exclusive i don't remember this item being featured on the global first year anniversary but nonetheless that item was crazy it pretty much just maxed out the key of all of your allies 
So best believe that this was the time to grind any Dokkan event you ever struggled with. Especially when you take into account the fact that they brought back every Dokkan event and strike event for the anniversary. Anyways, the new Super Saiyan Goku was nothing crazy, but a good card if you were a new player and needed something to start with. Talking about new players, they also held a returning campaign. If more than 100,000 players returned into the game during the duration of the campaign, every player would be rewarded with 35 stones and a new Spirit Bomb Goku. Yes, the infamous Big Ass Hope Goku. <laughs> Big Ass Hope Goku was actually pretty good for a free play card. He had a Noki leader skill, a supreme damage multiplier, and a new can pass it. 7% attack per key sphere obtained. It doesn't seem like much nowadays, but back then this was actually pretty decent for a free play card. The celebration also brought a new event where you could form an SR Kid Goku. He wasn't anything crazy, but I guess a decent card if you were a new player. But we all know how much GP players love Kid Goku, so I'm sure they were pretty pleased with this new card. This event also came with a ton of new growth events. One where you could form Awakening Medals, one for Trinian items, and one for Zeni. Fun fact, but this is the event that introduced the Platinum Hercules statues so yeah all of those events were pretty much a must do for any player at the time since resources were pretty scarce even for wells let's also not forget about the bait banner that came just before the big guys it featured pretty much every super saiyan character that surpassed the super saiyan level in the game at the time and you were guaranteed a new super saiyan 2 character for multi summon not an ssr per se but with how many super saiyan 2 characters there were at the time the chances of you pulling an ssr were probably higher than a regular banner so a good bait banner but not the only one there was also a first year anniversary special summon banner where you had one multi summon which had a guaranteed SSR and that banner featured every single SSR that wasn't a Dokkan Fest so your chances of pulling something somewhat decent were pretty high. Like you can see in this video this Japanese player pulled three pretty decent SSRs in one multi summon. The month of February started as you already know the first year anniversary summon banners featuring Strength Super Gogeta and In Janemba, the actual first dual Dokkan Fest ever. Their banners were actually very very good and the best banners yet. But first, let's talk about the new units. Gogeta's banner came with two new characters, an AGL Ultimate Gohan and a Take by Kuhan. AGL Ultimate Gohan was actually pretty decent, but thanks to Gogeta, there's pretty much no point in mentioning leader skills from now on. But he did have a Supreme Damage Multiplier and a 70% attack buff and his key was 7 or more, so a pretty decent character. Take by Kuhan was also not bad, like sure he had an Extreme Damage Multiplier, but he was the first unit ever to greatly lower attack on Super, which was a a very powerful ability and he also gained 3 key and 2500 attack when facing one enemy so this guy was actually very good in super sentry goku's dokkan event janemba's banner only came with one new character a physical super saiyan gotenks he had a supreme damage multiplier and the second unit ever to be able to seal on super which honestly is kind of weird like why are the only sealers in the game physical type units i guess they really wanted you to summon for janemba <laughs> so best believe that this guy was insane in every event where he could seal the enemy's super attack. He also had a 77% attack buff when performing a super attack. So this guy was also hitting pretty hard. But the crazy thing about him is that he was Gogeta's best linking partner. They shared 4 links together with 3 of them being key links. So if you were able to run them together, you pretty much couldn't miss a single super attack under Gogeta's new leader skill, but we'll get into that. Now talking about the big boys, let's start with Janemba. In Janemba was the best extreme class unit at the time, and it wasn't even close. He had a supreme damage multi Player, a star of turn flat stat buff of 5000 attack and defense and probably the strongest ability in the game guard the first unit to have unconditional guard couple that with his pretty decent link set this guy was pretty much the best tank in the game if only gogeta wasn't so far and away better <laughs> this guy could have actually seen some use like his leader skill had the strongest attack buff seen yet 80 percent attack to in type units the problem is that the in type was just not that great janeba was the first in type duck and fast character and i guess you had like int middle cooler and like interlist who were also great but but they had pretty much no synergy together so yeah his team was just felt bad unless you were a well and in that case it was like okay i guess now for the moment you've all been waiting for let's talk about the greatest units to ever release in dokkan strength gogeta strength gogeta brought a new type of leader skill tricky to all type with a 3000 flat stat attack buff like bro you've got to understand this was single-handedly the best leader skill in the game and by so much like i honestly don't understand what they were thinking releasing something like that this early on <laughs> like bro this guy had the same leader skill as 
all of the other Dokkan Fest characters, but without the type restriction. Like the only thing that made those leader skills balanced at the time was the fact that they had a type restriction. And this guy just came out of nowhere with an unrestricted leader skill. And I don't want to get ahead of time, but they were not even done with the other leader skills. Like there was still no int or physical Dokkan Fest with a tricky type of leader skill. And those were bound to come. So just him coming into the game not only killed every single leader skill that released before him, but also killed future leader skills that were about to come. So yeah, just for that leader skill, you absolutely needed Gogeta. Like there was legit no point in running anything else that wasn't Gogeta as your leader. Honestly, the more I think about it, I think that Gogeta was probably a mistake because why would you release a unit that would kill the cells of all of your future releases? Unless he was like featured on said future banner, I guess. But they actually didn't stop there. Gogeta was the first unit to have an immense damage multiplier, which was actually quite a big jump from the supreme damage multiplier. <laughs> so not only did this guy have the best leader skill in the game, he also had the best SA multiplier and the only one to have it at the time. But not only was he the first unit to have an immense damage multiplier, he was also the first unit to be super effective against all types. So okay, let me put this into perspective. This guy had the best leader skill, the best damage multiplier, and couldn't be stopped by any types. Like, <laughs> if he wasn't super effective against all types, he wouldn't have been that great against AGL type enemies. So at least in that scenario, some tech type units would have shined, you know, like tech cell or something like that. But no, this guy was super effective against all types. So like I said before, there was absolutely no scenarios where you would be better off running somebody else. <laughs> Gojida was just the hardest hidden unit in the game against any type of enemies. Like, this guy was just the king of Dokkan. And bro, you thought I was finished. Nah, bro. <laughs> there is more. This guy's link set was also far and away the best in the game. He had 5 key links. Like, bro, 5 key links. So not only was he the hardest hidden unit in the game, he just couldn't run out of key. And was just a key battery for all of your other units. He also was Agile Shpresen Goku, the former best unit in the game, I guess you could say. Best linking partner sharing four links with him and not only did he have the best link set he also had the highest base stats in the game and by so much i think that the highest attack stat before him was strength broly with a 9000 attack stat broly he was a full-on glass cannon with his only gimmick being dealing as much damage as possible while gogeta had an attack stat of 10,000, the first unit to have stats over 10,000, because yes his hp was also over 10,000. <laughs> and you would think that Janiba 2 would have those stats, but nah, bro. <laughs> and Janiba's stats were normal. Like, this was a special treatment exclusively given to Gogeta. And then they wondered why Janiba's banner performed so poorly. Like, bro, the dev really didn't think this through. It's insane. <laughs> but you know what's actually insane? The fact that it's still not over. Gogeta had the strongest key multiplayer in the game. While other Dokkan Fests had a key multiplier of 140%, Gogeta had a key multiplier of 150%. And bro, I'm still not done. <laughs> okay, no, I am. But yeah, if you don't understand why Gogeta was so good at the time, I hope I actually made it clearer for you. But now let's talk about these guys' banners. Strength Gogeta's banner featured outside of the new units Strength Percent God Goku, AGL Golden Frieza, Physical Kid Buu, Tech Cell, Tech Percent Tree Vegeta, Physical Ultimate Gohan, AGL Kid Buu, Strength Percent to Goku, and Int Cell. So, a pretty decent banner. <laughs> but when you take a look at Janemba's banner, it was clear which one was better. In Janemba's banner featured two of Gogeta's best linking partners. Int's percent Gotenks and Agile's percent Goku. Strength Broly, the most valuable unit to date thanks to the World Tournament. Agile Gotenks, Tech's percent Vegeta. The GOAT Physical's percent Bardock, which leader skill was now worthless, but he still supported the entire rotation for Tsuki while also being able to seal on Super. Agile Full Power Bardock and Int and 13. So Gogeta's banner had 12 featured units, while in Janemba's banner only had 9. So your chances of pulling in Janemba were actually higher than your chances of pulling strength Gogeta. Which made sense when you take into account how great Gogeta was, but still a dick move from their part. <laughs> their banners were also the first to introduce the perform 3 multi summon and get 1 free, with 1 30 stones discounted mode. So yeah, you had to summon for Gogeta until you were able to pull at least 1 copy, and then probably summon on Janemba's banner to complete Gogeta's team. Which which honestly wasn't even necessary since Gogeta had just so many key links and could pretty much link with any sane character but you know if you just wanted to go crazy <laughs> and have the most optimal team. Now for both these guys Dokkan events. Gogeta's Dokkan event was very hard. Probably the hardest Dokkan event to date. The first phase unlike other Dokkan events had two enemies instead of one. The last phase had two additional health bar and the link that did additional damage in the event was big bad bosses. An extreme class link which was not held 
held by many good units at the time. So you pretty much had to use stones to beat Gogeta's Dokkan event. But it was worth it because once you had strength Gogeta Dokkan awakened, you could just beat anything at that point. Gogeta's Dokkan event also came with a new farmable SR Veku. This guy had a 50% chance of getting 50% damage reduction at the start of turn, which was pretty much a coin flip ability, especially when you look at his stats. If I'm not wrong, I think outside of like meme units, this is still the lowest defensive stat in the game, and it definitely was at the time. So yeah, I guess if you were willing to risk it, this guy had some use, especially against Janimba's Dokkan event. Talking about Janimba's Dokkan event, his Dokkan event was actually just a regular Dokkan event, like one enemy and three health bars, and his weakness was just the Super Saiyan Link, as well as Gogeta and Veku. So yeah, his Dokkan event was way easier to beat and if you had Gogeta Dokkan Awakened and physical Gotenks who could seal this was just a breeze well by Dokkan event standards obviously <laughs> compared to what Dokkan events are today this was still fairly difficult but probably the easiest Dokkan event to date anyways now the fun is over it's time for another world tournament the eighth world tournament thankfully they made some changes to the rewards like you still need 80 wins for an SSR ticket but you could now get a free copy of one of the new SSRs if you reach the beers tier which was way easier to do than to get 80 wins as for the two new rewards cards <laughs> bro they were trash thanks to gogeta and honestly just not worth the grind unless you were a fan of gt like bro they still had extreme damage multipliers and fairly low attack buffs in their passives so yeah not great at all they also added some new cards to the world tournament banner but only two of them are really worth going over the new sr bulma was actually a must run in the world tournament if you had strength broly since she gave three key to strength type units like this was the first unit in the game to support for three key which was quite the jump and could make the difference between your broly launching a super attack or not physical kami would have had a great leader skill if it wasn't for Gogeta and his damage multiplier would have been also fine but nah the only thing going for him at the time was his passive skill. He was supporting all allies for 15% attack and defense which was honestly not even that great. Like under Gogeta's team which was the only team at the time you were just better off running another damage dealer instead of a support time unit that does no damage like physical cam. Five days later they released a little Xenoverse celebration which was still part of the first year anniversary with five new characters and one new strike event. Age of Spursin Zero Strike was honestly not bad, like he had a supreme damage bolt pair with a decent spur attack effect, raising his attack by 50% for 3 turns. There was still no potential system at the time, so no additional spur attack, so no way of really making the best out of that ability, but coupled with his 40% starter from attack buff, he could output some decent numbers. But nothing even close to what Gogeta was capable of doing, that's the problem. Tech Toa was a support type unit, giving 2 key to all allies, so actually not bad, but that was pretty much her only use. Like she had a garbage leader skill and extreme damage damage multiplier. I guess greatly lowering defense was a decent ability in like Broly's Dokkan event, but she was tech so honestly forget it. In Demigra on the other hand, actually had the closest thing at the time to Gogeta's leader skill. 3 key when above 50% HP. Like it was still a worse leader skill in Gogeta, but when you look at the rest of his kit, it actually looks better than it is, because this guy was pretty much just a stunner. He had a supreme damage multiplier with a 20% chance of stunning for 2 turns on super, and a 50% chance of stunning the attacked enemy for 1 turn with his passive. So yeah, if you were able to keep the attacked enemy stud every turn his leader skill was actually quite decent he also had big bad bosses and was in so this guy was actually a pretty good card in Gojita's look kind of event physical Mira was also alright I guess like he had a supreme damage multiplier and a 70% attack buff on super so he was like super saiyan zino trunks like an okay unit SR supreme Kai of time I guess she was just like an updated version of SR in Jakku like they had the same passive skill but she had a 7% chance of stunning all enemies for 2 turns instead of 1 and she also lowered attack on super so uh, yeah, not a great card unless you were very lucky. Four days later, they followed the Xenoverse campaign with a new future saga campaign. It came with a new banner featuring three new characters and a new story event featuring two new free play characters. The new free play characters were honestly not that great. Like honestly, they flat out sucked. But on the bright side, Super Saiyan Trunks was now farmable, right? Well, actually he wasn't. <laughs> this new Trunks was called Super Saiyan Trunks Future, so he didn't share the same name as the other Super Saiyan Trunks, who were called Super Saiyan Trunks Teen. I honestly to this day don't understand that naming. Like, I get it, he was 18 when he went back in time, but you're telling me that he has the same age and is the same character as the Trunks from Dragon Ball Super? Like, well, <laughs> doesn't make sense. Now, as for the new summonable characters, the androids were orb changers, but the new kid meta was pretty much dead by that point, so they didn't really see much use. Like, if they had released like two months prior, both of them would have been crazy. But they unfortunately came at the wrong time. The meta now was just 
good she died, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> Stack Future Gohan, on the other hand, was actually not bad on Gogeta's team. He greatly stacked attack, shared three links with strength Gogeta, and had a 60% attack buff and below 80% HP. So a decent option if you're a fan of Future Gohan or needed a decent tech type unit to run on Gogeta's team. Also, I almost forgot, but the Future Saga story event had the best stage to farm Gravity Chambers, which was the best training stage. And honestly, it's still my go-to training stage to this day. The month ended with the first ever Super Strike event, AGL Super Strike Vegeta. It was damn time, because those strike events were just worthless by that point. <laughs> so it was the right time to start awakening them into SSRs. Vegeta's leader skill now gave three key to AGL and tech type units. Still worthless unless you didn't have Gogeta or any of the all type key leaders, but uh, yeah, I guess it was fine. They didn't make any changes to his super attack and only reduced the key condition of his passive from 8 to 6, which is honestly the worst upgrade I've ever seen. Like, this was just like a garbage upgrade. It literally did nothing. But I guess he did have higher stats now. It also opened the possibility for other strike units to potentially become good. And look, he was able to output some decent damage. It's just that, like I'm going to say for the next six months, he was nothing compared to strength Gogeta. And you had way better options on Gogeta's team. Now that the anniversary was pretty much over, the month of March started with a new Dokkan Fest, physical full power Frieza. He came with three new units but only one really worth going over, Strength Super Saiyan Goku. He had a supreme damage multiplier and the ability to survive an attack that would kill you and above 30% HP. This made him honestly a pretty good option on Strength Gogeta's team which was a kill before getting killed type of team. As for full power Frieza, well this guy's leader skill was very much worthless thanks to Gogeta but he was the second unit ever to have an immense damage multiplier and when you couple that with his 120% attack buff on Super, best believe that this guy was hitting very hard. And funnily enough this guy shared two links with Gogeta, one of them being over in a flash, so you could genuinely run him on Gogeta's team if you wanted to. Like sure, it wasn't the most optimal way to run him, but he was just doing so much damage and Gogeta's team was just so far and away the best team in the game that it honestly didn't matter. Fira's banner was also not bad, it featured Injanemba, Texel, and Strength Percent Bardock, but there was just no way in hell you were summoning on any banner that didn't feature Strength Gogeta, unless obviously you already had him. And they actually knew that, hence why the first multi of the banner was a 4 D stones discounted multi. As for Frieza's Dokkan event, this event was pretty much a hell if you didn't have strength Gogeta. Like Super Sentry Goku's Dokkan event, this event had a countdown, and at the end of the countdown you would pretty much just die. <laughs> like Frieza would launch a super attack that would instantly kill you. Hence why the new Namek Super Saiyan Goku had the ability to withstand a KO inducing blow. But the thing with Frieza is that instead of having 3 health bars like the other Dokkan events, he had 4. So yeah, his Dokkan event was pretty hard. Probably the second hardest Dokkan event in the game. His event also came with a new farmable final form Frieza, who was nothing crazy, he had an extreme damage multiplier and a 50% chance of raising his attack by 70% at the start of turn. But I guess since his SR was a first form Frieza, it meant that now we could farm the super attack of other first form and final form Frieza's, but they were all outdated by that point, but still something that could be good in the future. 9 days later, they dropped another world tournament. Unlike the last one, this one only brought one new reward card, so I guess this was only a one time only thing for the end. Anniversary. The new tech tier list was actually not bad, he was like a free to play version of Indemigra. They shared the same leader skill and super attack effect, but this guy had 3 key for 5 turns from first appearance, so best believe that this guy didn't have any problem super attacking. Like if you didn't have inter list and strength Gogeta, this guy was probably worth the grind and one of the best world tournament reward card yet. 5 days later. They added more stages to a hero extermination plan event, which brought two new Dokkan awakenings. They both had supreme damage multipliers, decent passives, and link sets. That synergized pretty well with Gojja's team, so yeah, pretty decent cards. Two days later, they released new quest stages and characters to the Baba shop. Agel Chao Tzu was pretty much just a stunner, like a weaker version of Indemigra. Tech Yamsha could greatly lower attack on Super and gained 8 key when below 80% HP. Like, honestly, not a bad card at all. Probably one of the best Baba shop characters at the time. In Spursaint, Gohan was actually very good for a free to play character, he had a supreme damage multiplier unlike other Baba Shop units, a 77% attack buff when below 80% HP, and a decent link set. But what made him really great was the fact that he was this good with his team cost that was very low at the time, which was a must for super strike events that required you to have a low team cost. Strength Krillin was just the strength version of Tech Piccolo, so a very good tank against physical type enemies, and SR Ginyu Goku was an orb changer, but that's pretty much it. Almost two weeks later, they released a new G GT banner and Black Star Dragon Ball story event. The two new free play characters were not in word going over. Like I guess GT Goku was a new curve, but like I said earlier, the new Ken meta was 
is just pretty much dead at this point. As for the summonable units, GT Super Saiyan Trunks was also a new king unit, but him being a summonable character with better stats and a supreme damage multiplier did make it somewhat okay, I guess. He also linked pretty well on Gojira's team, so not a bad card. Strength Medal Real though was actually a crazy tank. He had 10,000 defense at the start of turn, like a flat stat buff. That high was something never seen before at the time, and he did that while also lowering attack on super. And since he had the big bad bosses link, he was a decent option against Gogeta's Dokkan event if you still haven't beaten it. GT Super Saiyan Goku was also not bad. He had a supreme damage multiplier and a guaranteed super attack at 9k or more, while also having a decent link set, so yeah, not a bad card at all. SR Tech Pan was the tech version of SR Bulma, but since there was no tech type AoE units at the time, she wasn't really that useful. Outside of maybe some super strike events where your team had to have a low team cost, like she could shine there, <laughs> but that's pretty much it. SR Int Baby was just Int SR Boobot and a different skin. Literally, so completely worthless. <laughs>